Good morning. Today, I just want to welcome you into uh, our Tier Fund Sunday. Tier Fund is an organization here in Canada that uh, operates in other parts of the world at the Free Methodist Church in Canada, uh, partner with Tier Fund Canada to help in situations that go on around the world, especially in crisis events. Uh, right now, you can give to uh, through Tier Fund to help people in places like Lebanon, uh, the Gaza Strip, various areas that are in conflict uh, or where there's immediate needs. They also are at work uh, helping uh, many different countries in many different communities making a difference and helping the most vulnerable. And so once a year, we take this opportunity to celebrate what Tier Fund is doing, to hear what they are doing, and uh, to promote, and, and also to give an opportunity uh, to give to this important ministry. Uh, and so this morning, the message that I have to share is, is kind of a guided message from Tier Fund Canada that I've kind of adapted and worked into place. So I just want you to know that as we uh, launch into this morning's message. And uh, the theme for today is called Streams of Living Water. The message outline, again, today comes from Tier Fund Canada. And, uh, and so I've made those uh, adaptions. You'll also notice as we move along that slides will come up as part of the PowerPoint. Normally they come up at the bottom of the screen, but uh, I will continue to talk, but you'll see those slides come up so you can see the full slide and the information that's listed there. So I want to begin by asking you a question. How do you or we view a changing climate? Do you feel that climate change is a hoax or uh, it all burns up in the end anyway, so why care about it? This is God's plan, or maybe you feel that um, saving people is the priority of the church, not the planet. Maybe you can relate to some of these statements, or maybe you know of family members and church friends who have expressed such views. I was actually thinking this week that here we are in the middle of October, and here in Kingston, we have yet to even have a, had a frost on the ground in the morning. I remember growing up as a teenager, I worked on a farm south, in southwestern Ontario. Every year without fail, we would have frost warnings beginning in late August. The farmers were concerned as a heavy frost meant the loss of their crop. As one who loved snowmobiling, we're almost always on our sleds by early November through to late March. Today, there are some years when they cannot even get the trails open due to a lack of snow. So in my mind, something has certainly changed. As part of Tier Fund Sunday, we're going to take a fresh look at creation, and we're going to ask ourselves the question, should we care? The clear answer is yes. John Stott says, our concern for the environment is not just a Christian duty, it's also an aspect of our Christian witness. We must demonstrate that we care for God's creation. So a good place to start, regardless of your views on climate change, is to look at the Bible and what it has to say about caring for creation and why we as Christians should be leading the charge, so to speak, on this topic. Point number one is that we recognize that there is a creator in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1.1. God is the creator of all things, and he exists separate from creation before anything there was God. The acceptance of an eternal God who has always existed and who created all things is the foundation of all truth. So with this understanding, we can recognize that point two, God loves and values his creation. You'll often hear this statement echoing uh, the halls of many churches across Canada. God is good with the response all the time and then repeated in reverse all the time. God is good. But we, but have we ever purposefully tied that goodness um, to creation? 
I hope as part of the service and eyebrow anyways, that you've uh, had somebody read Genesis 1 uh, uh, as part of the service. If not, take that opportunity to read Genesis chapter 1. And uh, when you have opportunity, do that yourself. And chapter Genesis chapter 1, it's full of the goodness of God. At the end of each day of creation, he saw that it was good. And then in verse 31, he completes creation by calling it very good. So if a good God saw what he has created as very good, then shouldn't our response be the same? And if it is declared very good by a good God, then why should we accept and expect and even aid in its destruction? He didn't just declare it very good and then forget about it. He continues to create and care for creation. The Psalms are full of this reality. There's many Psalms I've listed there, I believe, on the screen. Uh, 8, 33, 84, 95, 104, 145, 146, 147, 148. Uh, they all talk about um, the care for creation. Psalm 24, 1 and 2 summarizes it well. The, Lord, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Job speaks of it. In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind, Job 12.10. As well, in Job 26, 7 to 14, and of course the final chapters of Job, as a creator God defends his goodness, justice, and uh, might by speaking of his creation. Nehemiah declares, You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all the starry hosts, the earth and all that is on it the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you, Nehemiah 9, 6. Isaiah writes, My own hand laid the foundations of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together, Isaiah 48, 13. You can also see Isaiah 40, 28, and Isaiah 45, 12. And of course, Jesus declares the Father's care of creation in the Sermon on the Mount when he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, uh, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field uh, grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? His love and care for creation will never end. It's eternal. As creation was released from the ark, God established a rainbow in the sky and declared, Never again will I destroy the earth with a flood. This covenant was not uh, only just for Noah and his descendants, but for the earth itself. Psalm 104 is a beautiful psalm that speaks of his eternal past, present, and future. Uh, love and care for creation, and I encourage you to take some time to read that one as well. And of course, he also speaks of an eternal home for his creation as he establishes a new heaven and a new earth that will be forever in his care, where he tells us that it will be a place where there will be no more pain or sorrow or loss or where the lion will lay down with the lamb and the waters will flow forever. This is all great and very good. God is the creator and all that he created is good, which, by the way, includes you. Be encouraged because God made you and he declares you as good. He doesn't make mistakes. So the question for us today as his followers is what's our responsibility when it comes to all that he created? Point number three. Humans are unique in creation. We have been set apart in creation as stewards of creation. 
Again, when you look at that first chapter of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, in verses 26 to 28, uh, God created us to be stewards of his creation. Genesis 1.26 reads, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And Genesis 2.15 reads, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. There is one word and two phrases in these verses that understanding their Hebrew meaning, they'll help clarify what our role is. Dominion. The Hebrew word here is uh, rada, which means to have dominion, to uh, subjugate, uh, to have agency or take action over. And then to work it. The Hebrew word here is abad, which means to serve as subjects, work for another, uh, in this case, creation. And thirdly is to keep it. The Hebrew word here is shamar, which means to guard, to watch out for, to treasure, to preserve, uh, to protect. Our unique role in creation is to be the caretakers of what God has established. Here's a quote from uh, Chuck Smith. God didn't say to Adam, just go and, uh, and, you know, mess it all up, destroy it, cut down the trees. He said, no, dress it and keep it. Really, I believe that only a child of God has true appreciation of nature, a far greater appreciation of nature than a humanist. They are the ones who, through a greed, have not cared for the world that God created and have so destroyed it by greed, but not by a Christian or biblical principle at all. Again, that was by Chuck Smith. As parents, we are charged to dress, feed, and care for our children in the same way has not God the Creator charged us with the same directive for His creation. And yet, the destruction of the environment around us is very evident. Greed and materialism have led to us often living beyond our means and has had a devastating consequences for the earth and its people, and especially for the poor. Climate change has had a massive effect on the poor and the rural communities of the global south. Tear Fund says that the families we speak with and the countries we serve tell us the effects. Climate change for some of us is an inconvenience. Oh, it's a little bit too hot today, or a little bit too wet today, or a little bit, or it's a little bit too cold. And then we try to buy things and uh, that make us more comfortable, so that climate change is not as incon as much of an inconvenience for us. But for many of the people living around the world, climate change means death. Crops have failed again and again and again. And these are small-scale farmers, and for them, when the rain is too much or too little or comes at the wrong time, either too early or too late, it's basically death. And so we've seen a huge number of farmers committing suicide. The Evangelical Fellowship of India Commission on Relief had this to say, If we do not help families adapt and address some of the causes of climate change, then even more people will enter into extreme poverty. At Tear Fund Canada, it is their mission to elevate individuals and community, communities out of extreme poverty, and we acknowledge and practice the biblical principles of creation care, and in so doing, share the love of God for his creation as well as humanity. And at the center of that, uh, love and care is Jesus, which brings us to our fourth point, and that is Jesus is creator, sustainer, and redeemer of all creation. Colossians 1, 15 to 17 and verse 20 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And through him uh, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. All of history 
and all that is come has is to come points back to the cross and the redeeming work of Christ. And it is not just humans that will be redeemed and joined together for eternal praise. Remember Jesus' words to the Pharisees when he was entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and they were rebuking his followers for praising the Lord. And Jesus said, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out, Luke 1940. Or the last words of the greatest uh, hymn book ever written, Psalm 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So based on that, does that mean there will be rock concerts in heaven? The rocks will cry out. Anyways, in the meantime, but in the meantime, we wait with all creation because, point five, Creation longs to be redeemed. Romans 8, 12, and 22. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be set free from its enslavement to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning together as it suffers together the pains of labor. We live in a fallen, created world where the created is worshipped over the creator himself, where greed, ambition, and selfishness supersedes love and care. This is not God's original plan, but it has been our reality ever since Genesis 3. So what's our response as Christians? At Tear Fund, we talked about poverty existing because of man's original sin. Poverty is a result of mankind's broken relationship with God, self, others, and creation. Poverty at its core is more spiritual with the physical lack being the outcome of that brokenness. But the good news is, is that Through Jesus, God is working to restore these broken relationships and to make all things new. As God's image bearers and representatives on earth, we are to steward creation on his behalf. This can be seen in Genesis, echoed through scripture, and now realized in the church. As God's church, we have been invited to join him in this ministry of reconciliation, transformation, and restoration to bring people out of poverty. And that's exactly what Tierfan focuses on with its partners. Our desire at Tierfan is to take care for creation and the people within it. You already heard a bit of the devastating effects that a changing climate has had on families in India, but this isn't an isolated event. Everywhere we work, families who are living in poverty share their stories on how a changing climate is wreaking havoc on their lives. In Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania, what was once predictable and gentle rains have become unpredictable and torrential, causing drought or flood, making it harder to farm and grow the food that they need. This erosion has devastated farmland. In this photo, you can see how the rains have created these massive gullies, This was once flat farmland, but now is a massive canyon. In the top right, you can see two people standing on the edge of a cliff. This photo was taken just a few months ago in South Sudan. Elderly, uh, this man uh, has lived in this part of South uh, Sudan for decades. And he told us how over time the rains have been coming later and later, leading to mass food shortages. So in response to scripture and these realities, we are committed to helping families adapt to a changing climate. Through the efforts of our partners, the local church has mobilized these communities to restore the land through tree nurseries and tree planting, creating awareness, training families on soil and water management, conservation agriculture, livestock management, and improving access to water. Here's one such story about uh, uh, Katharina, and uh, it's a video, so we'll watch that now.
My name is Catherine Kitonga. I have a husband and three children. I work as a crop and poultry farmer. The problem is water. Before settling here in 2011, there was drought. We lived here for years and we were poor. My husband would acquire small tasks to try to sustain us. During the dry season, children don't go to school. Can a child go to school on an empty stomach while the parents are living in poverty? When I started with Tia Fund Savings Group, I earned some returns. I started buying chicks and chickens so I could start poultry farming. I was then taught conservation agriculture by my teachers. I sourced some money from the group to hire someone to dig the pits and begin planting maize. I stopped farming with the old techniques because I do not reap anything. In 2016, I dug our borehole, began to plant skuma wiki, and began finding new ways to earn money. Upon harvesting some skuma, I will sell it and buy food for the children. My entire farm will resemble my kitchen garden with the zai pits. Last year, there was no rain. I was fortunate to have water, though it is still scarce. Our programming matters with food now becomes a, a, a major challenge to many families and households. And everywhere you realize that uh, food as a component as a, and the food system as well, it affects all the other activities in the livelihood. We are more oriented and uh, focusing towards uh, maybe climate smart projects in the future because we've realized uh, climate will always be a challenge. God is present. It is not easy to sow without faith. Your crops can grow and still be destroyed by pests. There is an advantage in putting God first and working hard. I have lived in this village for a long time and there is a lot of need. My neighbor is asking for help, yet I am also in need. Because of Tia Fund, things are much better. A woman in Tia Fund is definitely on the right track. It has really helped us. Katharina lives in a place called uh, Makuni, Kenya, a region, the region is very dry, yet Katharina's crops grow. How? Through climate adaptation techniques, such as climate smart agriculture, which prevents erosion, conserves water, and improves soil fertility, but still increasing temperatures have made water harder to find. And our vision is to go bigger. And as a result, we have started two new projects to restore land and give families a future. 
Together with local churches, Tier Fund has started two projects to restore large degraded landscapes and help families uh, sustainably grow more food. And you can be a part of this. Through your generosity, you can make a tangible difference and join in God's redeeming work in creation and in the lives of the poor. As you can see on the slide, your donations go to supporting and create the creation of tree nurseries and the, the planting of trees to reduce soil erosion. It goes to training farmers in climate smart agriculture methods to help them grow more food and feed their families goes to create water management structures so that communities will have reliable water sources year round to create a sustainable, thriving community. So today we're looking for people to join us by contributing to a few specific things. All money donated today will be used to help families adapt to a changing climate so that they can thrive in the long term. And here are some examples of the cost related to the above projects. $100 can provide 2,500 tree seedlings. $350 can sponsor a farmer field school teaching them about cultivation and how to do cultivation well. $750 can dig a water reserve, uh, reservoir. So in closing, I'd like to say that it's a pleasure to be partnered with Tier Fund Canada, knowing that they are being Jesus to the world beyond Canada. And you can give directly to Tier Fund if you like, uh, or uh, you can give through your local church. If you're watching this online, probably easier to give directly through Tier Fund. And, um, and so that is the best way to give and help in these areas. In closing, let me read Psalm 24 verses 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you for Tear Fund Canada. We thank you for the ministry that they are involved in, for, for being Jesus on the ground in these communities through the local churches there to make a difference and to help those in extreme poverty. Lord, I pray that you would um, use us through our monetary contributions, but also through our prayers to help see change, to help make a difference for these people whom we will never meet, most likely, on this side of heaven, but whom uh, we potentially will meet in heaven. And so, Lord, help us be your hands and feet, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.